This is Flipped Me Lecture number 32. In the last Flipped Mini Lecture, I showed you that the position of the center of mass is equal to the sum i equals 1 to m of the position of the ith particle times the mass of the ith particle. Then in the denominator, you have to put sum i equals 1 to m of just the mass of the ith particle. Let's show you something you can do with that. You might like to find the center of mass of a half a plate. So here's a half a plate of radius capital R. Now we already know that if I call this the y-axis and I put the y equals zero point around the symmetry point of this half plate that the YCM is going to be zero. So the only real question here is, what is XCM? Well, this formula doesn't really show you how to do that formula. You have to understand it differently. Now what I've done over here is I've chopped the plate, the half plate here, up into a bunch of strips. Let's call this the first strip and the second strip, and we'll call this the ith strip, dot, 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 and then that one there will be the mth strip. Now, why did I chop this plate up into strips? Well, because each of these strips, the whole strip has the same x value. So the ith strip has x value of x sub i. And... The area of the ith strip is however wide the ith strip is, which we can call delta x sub i. And then the only thing we don't know here is, well, how tall is the ith strip? So if we knew how tall was the, the ith strip was, then we'd know the mass of the ith strip. Because the area of the ith strip is delta x sub i. Let's give the height a name. Let's call it... Uh, L sub i. So that whole length there is L sub i. Its width is delta x sub i. And this area is some fraction of the total area. And that's going to tell us what fraction of the mass of this plate we have. So whatever the total area is of the plate times the total mass m of the plate, which we'll use uh, capital M with serifs to be the total mass of the plate, not to be confused with this M, which is just numbering us from 1 to M. Okay, so this strip has that fraction of the total mass because it has that fraction of the total area. Now, if this plate has radius r, then the total area, I can fix this up, that's pi r squared. That would be the area if it was a whole plate, so it's pi r squared over 2. And not much else I can do with that. Next thing I can do, though, is I can use a little geometry to figure out how big li is. This length that I'm looking for, well, half of it is this length right here. This is the circle of radius r. Half of this total length is this length right here. That side, of course, is the radius. This side is how far over we've gone x sub i. So we have li over 2 here. We have xi squared plus li over 2 squared is equal to r squared. Or throwing the xi squared to the other side, we have li over 2 squared equals r squared minus xi squared. Or that says that li is equal to twice the square root of r squared minus xi squared. So now I even have a formula for li. So I put everything that I knew that was down there up into this formula. There's the width of the ith 
strip, there's the length of the eighth strip, there's the total area of the half plate, there's the total mass of the half plate. Now one thing that's really nice right off the bat here is in the denominator we have some i equals zero to m minus one of all the strips, met the masses of all the strips, which of course is the total mass of the half plate. So that m cancels with that m. Okay, now this thing here, this is kind of nasty, but it has an interpretation of being a Riemann integral. If you take a fun, if you take this to be the width of a strip in a Riemann integral, and you graph what function this is, the Riemann integral of, okay, so there's the width of the i strip. This here, this whole mess here, that becomes the height of the i strip. So uh, if we define the function to be 2 root r squared minus x squared over, well, we still got this pi r squared over 2 garbage here. Then we have x, okay? That's the function, r squared minus x squared pi r squared over 2 x. Well, then when we evaluate this function here at x sub i, plug x sub i into all that, we've got the height that we de desire. That's the, this function evaluated at this point is that height. It's, so this is a bunch of widths times heights where that's the function. And uh, by the way, if you look at this function here, if x equals zero, this function is zero. At x equals r, this function is zero again. So this is function some function that grows and then falls back down. Um, it starts off linearly, by the way. And uh, it crashes back down to zero at x equals r, which is, by the way, exactly where we stop uh, adding strips. So what we're actually computing is this area. Now, as we make the number of strips here more and more, that is, as we make them narrower and narrower, this thing that we have to calculate here becomes a more and more accurate approximation to the thing that we're trying to calculate, XCM. Meanwhile, this thing here becomes more and more accurate approximation to the area under this curve. Now, mathematicians have a symbol for the area under this curve. This is the integral, 0 to r, of this function, 2 root r squared minus x squared over pi r squared over 2 times x dx. That's their symbol for this thing. So now let's kind of clean up a little bit. The two in the denominator combines with the two in the numerator to make a four. We still have an over pi. We still have a one over r squared. And now we're left with the integral of zero to r of r squared minus x squared times x dx. Now if you scale out the r's out of this integral, this entire thing turns into an integral 0 to 1 of 1 minus x squared x dx. And how many r's did we scale out? We scaled out 1, 2, 3 r's. So we get an r cubed out front. If you don't know how that I did that, that's OK. You'll figure it out in the calc class. Uh, I rescaled the integration. Now what's out front is just a plain old r. And I'm left with an integral that I can look up. Well, I have the book in which I look up these integrals. It's Dwight, Tables of Integrals and Other Mathematical Data. This is integral 351.01 in Dwight. And uh, the indefinite integral is here. And uh, I just need to plug in the upper and lower limit of integration. And the answer is this stinking integral is one third. You can also plug this into a program like Mathematica. Mathematica since has every last one of these tables built into it. So you don't have to look it up. But there it is. So that's 4 over 3 pi times r. 
Okay, so we have done it. I just put four over three pi into my calculator and I got that it's about 0 0.42. There's more digits, okay, that's not exact. So I'll say that's about with a squiggly equals sign. It's about 0.42 R. Now, what does that tell us? That tell us that the center of mass of this plate is not, uh, it's obviously not all the way halfway out to R. It's about, all the way out to R would be there. Halfway out to R would be there. It's about four tenths of the way, four fifths of the way to there, about four tenths of the whole way across the plate. 0.42 actually. So this X value of the center of mass of a half a plate is at about 0.42, 42% of the way to the edge. Well, this was already long, so I'm gonna call that 32A, and I'm gonna finish the job of what I covered in class on Friday in flipped lecture 32B.